In this video, I am going to talk about the most asked question these days, which booster with respect to Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This video will have two parts. In the first part, I will talk about the research study which shows how antibody levels respond after booster and in the second part, I will talk about real world data where we will see what people are preferring as booster and what kinds of side effects are expected. According to CDC, everyone above 18 is eligible for booster dose and they can mix and match between the three available vaccines. For mRNA vaccine, Pfizer and Moderna, boosters are recommended 6 months after completion of the primary series. And for j, &J vaccine, which is a single shot vaccine, booster can be taken 2 months after the primary dose. Let's now see the research data. This graph shows the amount of antibody generated after booster shot. Let me explain in detail. The top line shows the booster vaccine, which can be Moderna, Johnson & Johnson or Pfizer. There are three columns in each graph. The first column is the prime dose with Johnson & Johnson. Second column is the prime dose with Moderna. And the third column is the prime dose with Pfizer-BioNTech. On the y-axis, we have the antibody amount. And on the x-axis, they have seen the antibody level on day 1, that is on the day of booster. Then on day 15, that is 15 days after the booster. And on day 29, that is 29 days after the booster. Now let's understand one by one in detail. So for the first case, the primary dose is j and j and the booster is Moderna. On day 1 of booster, the antibody level was found in hundreds. After boosting with Moderna, on day 15, the antibody level increased to thousands, almost 5000. And on day 29, the antibody level remained almost the same. So it seems antibody level increases drastically upon boosting with Moderna after primary dose of j, &J. Let's see what was the response with the other mRNA vaccine, Pfizer-BioNTech. So the prime dose is again j, &J. On day 1, that is on the day of booster, the antibody was in the hundreds as expected and on day 15 it went to thousands but it is less than the antibody found in Moderna. Point to note here is that during the study full dose of Moderna was given but in the real world half dose will be given. So this might lead to bit lesser antibody with Moderna booster in the real world. However, in both mRNA vaccines booster induced good amount of antibody. Let's see now how j, &J booster worked for j, &J prime. In case of j, &J the antibody level was as shown in the graph. There was an increase in the antibody level but the increase was not that high. Let's see what happens when Moderna was prime and Moderna was booster. The antibody level was already high on the day of booster suggesting that Moderna produces more robust antibody response compared to j, &J. After 15 days of booster the antibody level went even higher almost in 10,000s and on day 29 it remained almost the same. Let's see Moderna Prime and j, &J boost now. The initial antibody level was high as expected. It went high upon booster but was in thousands. That means not as high as Moderna boost. In case of Moderna Prime Pfizer boost, the antibody level went high similar to Moderna boost. We don't have the day 29 in case of Pfizer boost. So no comments. Now Pfizer Prime and Moderna Boost initial antibody level was lower than Moderna Prime but upon boost it reached in thousands. In case of j, &J Boost and Pfizer Prime, the booster increased the antibody level but to lesser extent. In case of Pfizer Prime and Pfizer Boost, the antibody level increased on day 15 but was slightly less than Moderna Boost. So overall most mRNA vaccine induced more robust antibody response compared to viral vector vaccine Johnson & Johnson. This can help you in deciding which vaccine you would take as a booster. However, a very important question is how long the antibody stays and whether we need booster after every 6 months. And we have to take in consideration about the T-cells also. Now let's see the real world data. What people are opting for and what about the side effects. Remember this data is from survey VSAP where people report about side effects and what booster they are opting for. So this population is not representative of whole America. But of course it will give us an idea. Most of the registrants that is 97.6% reported they took the same vaccine dose as the primary dose. Let's see in detail. The primary dose is Moderna or Pfizer 
और जे एन जे नाइन्टी एट पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट हु टुक मॉडर्ना एज प्राइम डोज प्रेफर्ड मॉडर्ना एज देयर थर्ड शॉट वन पॉइंट फोर परसेंट टुक फाइजर आफ्टर टेकिंग मॉडर्ना एज देयर प्राइम डोज एंड पॉइंट जीरो फोर परसेंट टुक जे एन जे आफ्टर टेकिंग मॉडर्ना एज देयर प्राइम डोज फॉर फाइजर बायोटेक एज प्राइम डोज नाइन्टी एट पॉइंट टू परसेंट टुक फाइजर एज थर्ड शॉट वन पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट टुक In case of Johnson and Johnson prime dose, twenty-seven percent took Johnson and Johnson as their booster shot, thirty-six percent took Moderna as their booster shot, and thirty-seven percent preferred Pfizer-BioNTech. So it is pretty much clear that people are sticking to the same vaccine when it comes to mRNA vaccine, Moderna or Pfizer, but people who have taken Johnson and Johnson are switching to Pfizer and Moderna. So what are you thinking? What is your prime vaccine and what are you going to take as booster? Let me know in the comment. Let's now see what kind of side effects they face when they took the third dose. For this we have the data for mRNA vaccines only as Johnson and Johnson vaxers were too less nothing can be concluded. In case of Moderna let's see the side effects people faced. The light blue bar represents the side effects after first dose. The medium blue bar represents the side effects after second dose and the dark blue bar represents the side effects after the third dose. X axis represents different kinds of side effects and Y axis represents percentage of people that had the side effects. Higher the bar means more side effects. As you can see that side effects were more after second dose compared to the first one. However, if you look at the booster dose that is the dark blue bars, they give similar kind of side effects as the second dose. So booster did not increase the amount of side effects. Same is the case with Pfizer BioNTech. So now you can evaluate your condition. If your side effects were milder after second dose, it is expected to be milder after third dose as well. But if you had severe side effects after second dose, then you might expect to have severe side effects again. So talk to your doctor and decide which option is best for you. In the research study it was found that Moderna third shot gave more side effects compared to Pfizer BioNTech and J&J however again think to remember that Moderna was given as full dose in the research study and it will be given as half dose in the real world so side effects are expected to reduce the advisory committee of immunization practices recommends that people with moderately or severely immunocompromising condition receive a third dose of mrna covid-19 vaccine from the same manufacturer as the primary series hope now it will be easier for you to decide on which booster you want thank you